Come on, maestro! Hit it! Counting his opponents, Lu Chen realized there was only one archer within striking distance who could harm him. His first step was to get closer. He suggested to them that instead of fighting, they could sit down and talk it out. The knight scoffed, reminding Lu Chen of how he'd stolen their boss kill and killed their guild leader, asking if he was scared. Lu Chen chuckled, admitting the mad dragon guild's power, but refusing to lose hope. He hoped they'd give him a break so he could leave peacefully. The knight, however, refused, stating that their guild leader had ordered Lu Chen's death. Yet, considering Lu Chen's attitude, sparing him might be an option. Meanwhile, Lu Chen slowly closed in on the archer, bringing her into his fighting range. As he approached within three meters, he mused that he seemed to have angered the wrong people. The knight acknowledged Lu Chen's strength in escaping the network's grasp, but emphasized that compared to them, Lu Chen wasn't qualified, as they had already changed their jobs. He boasted about their guild's talent, even though he, as a knight, ranked only 10th. He declared their guild's ambition to rival the top guild in the future, the esteemed Candle Shadow Chaos Dragon Guild. From the moment he realized his gaming career was over, he says. Listening to the knights yapping, Lu Chen knelt and burst into laughter upon hearing their comments about his inability to compete with Candle Shadow Chaos. Believing Lu Chen was mocking them, they vowed to kill him, but Lu Chen declared that the tedious conversation ends there. He pointed out that the more they talk, the more painfully they will meet their end. Enraged, the archer attacked Lu Chen with her arrow, which he deftly dodged before leaping towards her and delivering a critical hit of 160. He criticized their team's mistake of positioning the archers in the front line, noting their weak awareness to the point of being laughable. The others were astonished by Lu Chen's skill as he continued, stating that because of their complacency, they allowed him to approach them from a hundred meters away, prompting him to question their competence. The knight reassured them not to panic, as it was still one versus three, confident that Lu Chen, merely a knight spirit who hadn't changed his job, would be easy to defeat. As they all charged at him, he deflected the knight's attack and then delivered a swift kick to his stomach, mocking his uselessness without the archer's support. He boasted about his invincibility in close combat, making it challenging for them to kill him. The airborne assassin attempted a sneak attack, but Lu Chen managed to block it effortlessly. The tank, roused from slumber, joined the fray with a punch, but as Lu Chen prepared to retaliate, he realized his reaction delay had decreased. Opting to dodge by stepping back, the two adversaries found themselves in a precarious position. Lu Chen teased them and inwardly reveled in the situation, contemplating his improving nerve repair speed, suggesting he might be able to challenge Candle Shadow Chaos in just two days. Testing his strength with a 0.7 second delay, he swiftly countered the tank's charge, slashing him with critical hits until he fell. The nearby knight wondered how it was possible for the tank to be killed in seconds, but his shock intensified when he realized that Lu Chen had also slain the assassin. Lu Chen then dashed towards him, reassuring him not to worry because his turn was coming soon. Scared and nervous, the knight who had initially declined Lu Chen's offer to sit down and talk pleaded for him to wait a minute, asking if they could now sit down and talk. Unfortunately for him, Lu Chen simply decided to dispatch him with a single critical hit, stating that he didn't have the habit of sitting down and conversing with his opponents. After dispatching them, Lu Chen proceeded to hasten his pace, knowing that the main force of Mad Dragon would arrive soon. However, something unexpected occurred. The knight who Lu Chen thought he had killed actually hadn't died. The knight sighed with relief, thinking it was a close call. He rose, expecting Lu Chen to be gone by now, but his relief turned to terror as Lu Chen appeared behind him saying, Hey! With a menacing expression, Lu Chen asked how the knight revived on the spot and if he hid a resurrection potion. Nervously, the knight explained that players above level 15 revive on the spot after death, and since he had just reached level 15, that was why he revived there. Lu Chen found this mechanic interesting, but realized he had to be more cautious after reaching level 15 to avoid spawn killing. The knight cautiously pushed away Lu Chen's sword, explaining everything and asking to be let go. 
Lu Chen mocked him for being pathetic after his earlier arrogance. The knight admitted defeat, acknowledging Lu Chen's strength. Suddenly, the knight received a voice call from his guild. Panicked, he initially decided not to answer, but Lu Chen urged him to. Knowing he had no choice, the knight answered. The guild leader instructed him to hold off Lu Chen until they arrived, determined to kill him to make him quit the game. Lu Chen joined in, taunting the guild for being annoying and persistent. Upon hearing Lu Chen's voice, the guild leader recognized him and threatened consequences if Lu Chen harmed their member. However, the call abruptly stopped, and they received a notification that Sea Dragon had been killed. Enraged, the guild leader vowed to kill Lu Chen, splitting the guild into two groups, one to confront Lu Chen at the Iceberg Peak, and the other to camp at the Resurrection Point. They were determined to make sure Lu Chen quit the game at level zero. Meanwhile, outside Iceberg Peak, Lu Chen waits patiently. Suddenly, a noise is heard, followed by a huge spear landing squarely on Lu Chen's back. The attack comes from the guild leader and his members. He commands the archers to shoot and joins the attack, which they promptly do, launching numerous assaults towards Lu Chen. Laughing joyfully, the leader declares that this is what happens if you mess with the Mad Dragon Guild. Suddenly, Everyone who participated in the attack receives a warning notification stating they have attacked the Iceberg Peak Night Elf Patrol Team leader. As a result, all human players in the Iceberg Peak area are marked as enemies by the Night Elf Patrol Team. The players are shocked, wondering what is happening and what the message means. Their questions are soon answered when the person they thought was Lu Chen reveals himself. Criticizing humans for their increasing boldness and daring to attack the Great Lord Fark. Unbeknownst to them, the person the guild attacked wasn't Lu Chen, it was actually the Night Spirits patrol team leader named Fark, who is furious that these humans destroyed the new clothes his friend gave him. Now even angrier, Fark is determined to kill them all. Realizing they have fallen into a trap and are doomed because they have been marked as enemies by the powerful forces of the Night Spirits, the guild leader tells them not to panic and maintain formation. However, they still panic and start running, but Fark won't let them escape. He summons his skeleton army, which emerges from the ground and grabs the legs of the fleeing players. The players scream for help as the skeletons multiply, and Fark orders them to kill all the humans. The leader instructs his subordinates to call for backup quickly, but Fark is unfazed. He leaps towards the leader menacingly and strikes him straight in the face, demanding to know how killing just a few of them can appease his anger. In short, he wants them to call for backup so he can kill more humans to satisfy his rage. Fark is prepared to kill all of these humans until they are reduced to level 14, preventing them from returning to their territory. Nearby, someone observes the battle closely, revealing himself to be Lu Chen. He explains that the plan to use a borrowed knife worked perfectly. He elaborates that he went to the village chief and bought ten sets of the same clothes he is wearing for just one copper coin per set. After that, Lu Chen approached Fark and began flattering him, praising Fark's fame and declaring him an idol not only to himself but to countless weaker night spirits. Lu Chen emphasized his admiration for Fark, likening it to a surging river. After this flattery session, Lu Chen mentioned he was from the countryside and that these were the best clothes available there, hoping Fark wouldn't mind accepting the gift. After accepting the flattery, Fark put on the clothes and struck a cool pose, to which Lu Chen commented that the ragged shirt matched Fark's temperament perfectly, reflecting the darkness and greatness of their race. Fully accepting the glazing, Fark declared that the Night Spirits were indeed the best race, to which Lu Chen asked if he could draw Fark's majestic image to keep for future admiration, a request which Fark accepted. He instructed Fark to pose by a tree and maintain the pose without moving, which ultimately led to the current situation where the Mad Dragon Guild attacked Fark. Back in the present, Lu Chen receives a notification declaring war from the guild leader, stating the fight will be to the death. It also offers a bounty of 10 gold coins to anyone who provides information on Lu Chen, with the reward from Mad Dragon Guild increasing from 250 to 500 coins. The condition for the bounty has changed from killing and causing level drops to killing only. Though annoyed by the increased bounty, Lu Chen isn't too bothered. He inwardly acknowledges that the guild leader's spending will attract more expert challengers, 
who will become stepping stones on his path to the top. Moments later, Lu Chen arrives deep in the ice ridge and encounters the undead swordsman, Surin, mentioned by the village chief. Surin, upon seeing him, calls him an ant and questions his presence in his territory. Lu Chen explains that he's come to seek a job change. However, Surin immediately attacks him with lethal intent. Unable to dodge, Lu Chen presents the introduction letter from the village chief. After reading it, Surin realizes it's from his old friend Nai Wan. Inwardly relieved, Lu Chen wonders why NPCs are so intimidating. Surin, influenced by Nai Wan's praise in the letter, decides to accept Lu Chen as a disciple. He emphasizes that as an undead swordsman, they must have a corrupt body and mind. Lu Chen agrees, and Suren instructs him to awaken his talent before the job change. Suddenly, a purple aura surrounds Suren's hand as he places it on Lu Chen's head, invoking the sleeping lord of the undead to let his power shine on earth. Overturn all the rules of the world dependent on the undead. Awaken your exclusive talent, Suren proclaimed. After these words, a purple glow enveloped Lu Chen, followed by a system notification indicating his successful comprehension of the talent Undead Power. Undead Power is a first-level ability that awakens the dormant strength of the undead, increasing damage to all living units by 5% and enhancing the talent's effect by 5% for each subsequent level up to 10 levels. This was tremendous for Lu Chen, as a full level could amplify damage by up to 50%. Surin then praised Lu Chen's exceptional potential, having manifested the highest quality undead power, granting him the qualification to become an undead swordsman. Raising his blade, Surin swore by the name of Asura, prompting Lu Chen to greet Asura's power with his night spirit body. Once the process concluded, Lu Chen found himself able to move freely again, pondering if the job change was complete. He received a notification congratulating him on changing jobs to undead swordsman, granting him five free attribute points, one point of reputation, and an unspecified amount of luck points. After reviewing the notification, he checked his attribute panel, noticing significant improvements across the board, feeling his body bursting with power. However, he wondered why he still appeared as a skeleton despite the job change. Surin approached him, explaining that the path of Asura is lengthy and obstructed. Thus, the skeleton form was essential to their essence. Noticing Lu Chen's exceptional bone structure, Surin mentioned three skill books that could aid in his rapid growth, graciously offering them. Lu Chen expressed gratitude, prompting Surin to explain that skill books are invaluable treasures. Recognizing fate at play, Surin offered a discounted price, acknowledging Lu Chen's potential. Lu Chen felt a pang of sadness as he realized the cost of the skill books. Surin then informed him that each skill book cost five silver coins. Crying at the thought of being broke again, Lu Chen recounted how he completed tasks and defeated bosses, yet only managed to save up 24 silver coins. Now Surin was taking half of that for the books. Clutching onto his money, Lu Chen pleaded with Surin, reminding him of their master-disciple relationship and asking for a discount. However, Surin dismissed his pleas, stating that the price was already cheap enough. After taking the money, Surin assured Lu Chen that the skill books were worth more than their cost, claiming he was selling them at a loss. Despite this, Lu Chen couldn't shake the feeling of being ripped off. Upon opening the skill books, a flurry of notifications appeared, informing him that basic swordsmanship increased sword weapon damage by 5% and provided a basic skill for undead swords. Additionally, he received extra items and five mana crystals, enhancing his slaying blade to deal 110% damage to targets. These new stat increases required mana, with one costing five and the other 18, each with cooldowns ranging from 3 to 15 seconds. Lu Chen remarked on how in the Spirit Age, swordsman skills only increased fixed amounts of damage, whereas undead swordsman skills increased damage by a percentage, leading to exponential growth in basic damage. He marveled at the dominance of the undead swordsman job. Turning to his master, Lu Chen expressed his eagerness to test his new skills in combat, asking if there were any tasks for him. 
He turned back and looked at Lu Chen, affectionately calling him a greedy kid, which Lu Chen oddly enjoyed. Tossing him the tasks, Suren instructed him to clean up the skeletons who had allied with humans. Lu Chen was elated and assured his master not to worry, promising to complete the task. Meanwhile, at the bug graveyard, a skeleton dog's bone was being set by a skeleton soldier who was feeding it. Suddenly, their peace was shattered by Lu Chen's unexpected appearance. With a swift strike of his slaying blade skill, he killed them both. Lu Chen marveled at the immense attack power he wielded after changing jobs. It was a one-shot skill. However, his triumph was short-lived as the skeleton soldier's body began emitting a purple aura and it lunged towards Lu Chen. Bewildered, he wondered what was happening. Assuming it was aiming for his sword, he was caught off guard when it targeted his body instead. With no time to dodge at this close distance, Lu Chen found himself in a precarious situation. As the impact struck him, he was sent flying and experienced a peculiar sensation. It felt oddly satisfying. His system informed him that he had absorbed a soul spark. Confused by this new experience, Lu Chen decided to investigate it later on the forum. Prodding the skull of the skeleton soldier, he then unleashed a skill called Death Grasp. Surrounded by a swirling purple aura, pondering what additional treasures this skill might yield, a notification revealed an item called Tattered Cloth, labeled as Trash. Dismissing it as useless, he discarded it, eager to continue his hunt, certain that not all skeletons were destitute. Moments later, he had slain 49 out of 50 skeleton soldiers and gathered 9 out of 10 skeleton fingers, closing in on his objectives. Pursuing the last skeleton, he prepared to strike with his sword, only to be caught off guard as it swiftly blocked his attack by executing a 180 degrees turn. Lu Chen was momentarily stunned as the skeleton unleashed a skill called Whirlwind Blade, surprising him with its ability to utilize skills. However, he quickly noticed its flawed technique and dispatched it with a single strike of his sword. With the completion of his task, a notification instructed him to proceed to the Hanbing burial for his reward, while also celebrating his achievement of reaching level 11, which brought him satisfaction. Reflecting on missed opportunities, he lamented not collecting 49 tattered cloths, deciding to use his death grasp skill on the remaining skeleton. To his delight, a small magic stone emerged, proving to be a superior find than the discarded cloth. Contemplating his surroundings, Lu Chen realized he was still within the necropolis Chinggu's burial site, marked by towering tombstones. Suddenly, he detected movement behind him and turned to face a towering level 15 Chinggu's skeleton. Shocked by its presence, he wondered if it was a mini-boss. The giant skeleton confronted him, demanding to know his origins and daring to intrude upon their territory. As it launched an attack, Lu Chen evaded and retaliated, swiftly defeating it. Bewildered by how easily he dispatched the giant compared to the skeleton soldiers, he pondered the discrepancy. The system informed him that Chingu's skeletons, the main race in the Chugu's burial site, are giants, yet have relatively low combat power. They excel in teamwork and move in groups. Lu Chen thought about it, and then asked if the system is basically saying that he just attacked something similar to a hornet's nest, as multiple arrows got sent towards him, which he obviously dodged with ease. But suddenly, a giant appeared accompanied by another, both ready to crush him with their powerful attack. Lu Chen blocked their attack and found their strength impressive, however, it was still too weak to defeat him. He pushed them back and leaped into the air. Then the giants decided to overwhelm him with numerous deadly weapons launched at him. It felt like the weapons were never-ending, and as he looked at his foes, he noticed that they all regrouped, ready to take him down and kill him. There were too many of them for him to deal with. He dodged, leapt high and sliced at a tombstone, hoping it would lend him its strength. As he landed, one of the giants mourned that it was its second aunt's tomb. Another giant then asked its teammate what it was doing and asked him to run, to which every giant heard. However, they couldn't dodge in time as the tombs fell on them, with only a few managing to escape. With this done, Lu Chen was ready to retreat, but suddenly he felt a strong pressure and as he looked back, he saw a boss. The other giant greeted their lord, and then the boss, with just a jest, lifted its finger, lifted the tomb from the giant skeletons, and brought them back to life. 
It then asked Lu Chen about his audacity to harm its subjects and commanded the giants to apprehend him. Now Lu Chen found himself in a peculiar situation with the giants surrounding him and the boss standing near, wanting him to perish like a little vermin. The boss, whom I've dubbed the undead Lord Ching Yu, has an unknown level. Lu Chen receives a notification warning him that he's facing an opponent beyond his ability, urging him to escape immediately. Unable to discern the boss's level, Lu Chen estimates it to be at least level 20 or higher. Surrounded by Ching Yu's skeletons, he wonders what the system means by escape. As they attack him, he's dismayed to find that even his execution blade can't penetrate their bones. Suddenly, the boss's aura fills the surroundings, revealing its terrifying power. Face to face, the boss levitates a tombstone toward Lu Chen, who inwardly recognizes it as the direction of the Hanbing burial. The boss asks if he has any last words, but Lu Chen provokes it by gesturing with his middle finger and questioning who it's trying to scare with that broken tombstone. Enraged, the boss prepares to kill him for his insolence. It launches the tombstone at Lu Chen, who had anticipated this. He leaps onto the flying tombstone, stabbing it to maintain his balance, bidding farewell to the monsters as he flies past them. Despite the boss's anger, it orders its minions to chase Lu Chen. However, when they reach the landing site of the tombstones, they find a message Lu Chen wrote, thanking the Lich Lord for the ride home, accompanied by a small drawing of himself and a heart. Impressed by the craftsmanship of the message and drawing, the skeletons express admiration, with one even complimenting the heart. Infuriated, the boss attacks them, berating them as idiots for failing to catch Lu Chen. However, the boss wasn't ready to give up. It commanded them to track, find, and kill him. Meanwhile, at the Hanbing burial, Lu Chen gave his master the fingers he requested and completed the quest. His master commended him, rewarding him with 1200 exp, 5 reputation, and a radiant bracer. He also reached level 12, finding his improved stats impressive. With another piece of Darkstone gear, he was a step closer to a full set, boosting his attributes. Though still unable to take on the Undead Lord, he could start farming Chingu's skeletons to level up. The Master then asked if he had encountered the Chingu skeletons and Undead Lord, to which he answered affirmatively, nearly dying in the process. The Master put his hand on Lu Chen's shoulder, stating that this new mission suited him well given his encounter. Lu Chen received a notification for his new mission. His first task was to kill 200 Chingu skeletons and collect 20 Chingu skeleton fingers, promising Darkstone equipment, 2200 exp, and 21 reputation upon completion. The second task involved slaying 200 thorny skeletons and collecting 40 thorny skeleton fingers with similar rewards. The third task was to confront the Undead Lord's guards and buy time for Surin to kill the Undead Lord Ching Yu, offering bronze equipment, 4,500 exp, and 100 reputation upon completion. Despite the generous rewards, the previous mission was an f rank, while this one jumped directly to e -plus. Surin then explained that amidst perils, they sought their fortune, ensuring Lu Chen that as long as the Undead Lord didn't absorb his soul ember, he would be safe. Curious, Lu Chen asked what exactly this soul ember was. Surin explained that it was the essence of an undead. The Nocturnal consisted of four major clans ruling over all the Nocturnal. The undead clan was the most numerous, followed by the physically strong Jiang Shi, the magically adept Dark Elves, and the immune to physical attack wraiths. Lu Chen remarked that despite their numbers, their clan felt weaker compared to the other clans. Suren clarified that among the four clans, only the undead could absorb soul embers for unlimited evolution, making them the strongest. This intrigued Lu Chen, prompting him to ask what happened if a soul ember was absorbed. Suren replied that one would fall into the abyss, exiled from this world. After hearing that, Lu Chen inwardly thought that being exiled from this world probably meant account deletion. Suren continued, saying that this essence was the crux of their undead clan, absorb or be absorbed by others, ultimately ascending to the status of equals with the divine. Lu Chen was confused about what he meant by standing with the divine, to which Suren explained that the divine referred to the absolute ruler of the undead, the monarch of the nocturnals, Asura. I thought bro was gonna say Song Jinwu. 
Asura represents the path of constant evolution for the undead to achieve glory. Surin mentioned that he might no longer have that chance, but Lu Chen certainly does. He is confident that Lu Chen will succeed in the future. Lu Chen agreed and stated that he will continue hunting down the Chingu's skeletons. Surin then advised him to be cautious because he is not only the hope of their kin, but also Surin's. Back at the Chingu's burial border, the giant skeletons patrolled the area accompanied by a messenger bird. They noticed the bird frequently gazing upward, leading them to speculate if something was up there. Another skeleton remarked that the tombstone was too high for someone to be up there, suggesting it might be another bird. Lu Chen narrowly avoided detection because he was the one hiding above. He had been observing them for 30 minutes and believed he had gathered all necessary information. There were eight patrol teams consisting of a five-man team and a messenger bird each. Lu Chen knew he had to eliminate the bird before it alerted the others, but the challenge lay in the fact that every ten minutes, two teams would converge. Once he attacked, he'd be on a tight schedule, with the remaining half likely to notice something amiss. It was quite the challenge for Lu Chen, but he had to act swiftly. After landing on the ground, he swiftly dispatched the bird before it could alert the skeletons. Then, he proceeded to eliminate the other skeletons with his skilled execution blade, delivering multiple slashes. Although Lu Chen was fast, he acknowledged the need to be even faster. Despite killing many skeletons, he only received one finger. The drop rate was disappointingly low, leaving him with no time to spare for looting. He calculated that he would encounter the next team in seven minutes, pondering if he could finish the next battle in less than 60 seconds. After some time, other skeletons arrived at the scene where Lu Chen had defeated the previous ones. They were puzzled by the sight of all eight teams being wiped out. If they hadn't altered their route, no one would have discovered what happened. Debating whether to report this, one skeleton mentioned that the intruder had escaped, potentially angering their master. To prevent further disappointment, they decided to double the patrol teams, triple the personnel, equip each team with four messenger birds, and expand the search area. They were determined not to let the intruder escape. Meanwhile, Lu Chen has killed 40 Chingu skeletons and collected four skeletal fingers. He is currently located at the Life Cemetery, perched atop the tombstone. He acknowledges that he has dealt with all the Chingu skeletons at the outskirts but recognizes that the mission is far from over. Now, he must venture deeper to hunt them down. Being at level 13, he estimates that defeating 40 more skeletons and completing the mission should propel him to level 15. Curious about his ranking, he checks the leaderboard. The first place player, named Orion, catches his attention as he is at level 18. Lu Chen admires Orion's prowess, considering him to be in a league of his own, possibly a leveling fanatic. Wondering where he stands at level 13, he scrolls through the rankings and discovers that he is ranked 125th. Accustomed to being in the top 100, being 125th is unacceptable to him. He resolves to reclaim his rightful position. Suddenly, he senses a presence that startles him. When he looks, he sees a level 18 undead knight, Orion, standing menacingly in front of him. Lu Chen realized that Orion had come for his bounty, which now stood at 50,000 gold. Orion remarked that he hadn't expected to run into him. However, Lu Chen replied that his bounty wasn't easily earned. Orion responded, stating that's good because it robs the fun otherwise. As thunder roared, they rushed towards each other with their swords. Lu Chen dodged Orion's attack and countered, dealing 10 damage. However, Orion proved formidable. Countering with a strike that inflicted minus nine damage, retreating, Lu Chen inwardly noted that Orion's reaction speed was slightly below his own, but Orion's defense was notably high, leading him to wonder if this was the advantage of being an undead knight. They battled on, and Lu Chen awaited the perfect moment. He parried Orion's attack, shocking his opponent with his incredible timing. While Orion was lost in thought, Lu Chen leaped into the air and unleashed his attack named Execution Blade, dealing 90 damage. Although momentarily pushed back, Orion regained his posture and retaliated with his skill Azure Thrust, an attack that Lu Chen complimented but deemed slow. As Lu Chen attempted to dodge, a sudden sting in his head caused him pain, preventing him from evading Orion's attack. 
which dealt 135 damage. Regaining his footing after being pushed back, he inwardly wondered what had caused the sudden pain, fearing his head might have exploded. Orion didn't allow him a moment's rest as he leapt into the air, poised to launch another attack. Fortunately, Lu Chen managed to block it, but Orion swiftly thrust his spear, disarming Lu Chen and sending his sword flying. Defenseless, Lu Chen was then kicked by Orion and sent flying. Meanwhile, he inwardly acknowledged that he had lost his sword and over half of his HP, while Orion had barely suffered any damage. He wondered if this was the end, if this was where he would meet his demise. As he pondered, Orion attacked once more, sending Lu Chen crashing into a tombstone, breaking it and landing on another. Orion believed the fight to be over, but to his surprise, Lu Chen blocked the attack using his armor. Confused by how Lu Chen was still alive, Orion considered it a positive turn of events. He then activated his recorder, realizing he had forgotten to record their fight. Suddenly, Orion noticed Lu Chen doing something and asked him what he was up to. Lu Chen remained silent and tossed a small leaf into the air. With precise concentration and swiftness, he slashed it, leaving only the roots. This display of skill shocked Orion. Meanwhile, Lu Chen was completely overjoyed that his reaction delay had been reduced by an entire 0.5 seconds. Now he only had 0.25 seconds left of delay. He laughed and remarked that the perfect test subject was standing right in front of him to try out his newfound reflexes. He then suggested to Orion that they continue the second half of their battle. In response, Orion asked if a guy without his sword dared to be arrogant. Suddenly, Lu Chen dropped the most badass remark ever, stating that he would only use two fingers to deal with Orion. Angered by what he perceived as a belittling gesture, Orion demanded to know how Lu Chen dared to underestimate him. He launched a powerful attack, but Lu Chen effortlessly flicked the spear aside with just one finger, remarking that Orion's assault was too slow. Flabbergasted, Orion couldn't fathom how Lu Chen could deflect his attacks with just his fingers. Believing it to be luck, he continued to assail him, yet each attempt was effortlessly halted by Lu Chen's agile fingers. Laughing, Lu Chen taunted Orion, stating that his attacks were ineffective. Orion retorted, accusing Lu Chen of lacking skill because he had only blocked basic strikes and vowed to demonstrate his prowess with his next move. Orion executed a skill called the Horizontal Sweep with his long spear. Lu Chen found the notion of blocking such an attack ridiculous, and to Orion's shock, the spear passed through him without causing harm. As Orion processed this, he received a knee kick to the face from Lu Chen, who warned him not to daydream. As Orion was sent flying, he inwardly pondered the turn of events. However, Lu Chen wasn't finished. He disarmed Orion, kicking him away. Lu Chen then retrieved his weapon, which had been sent flying earlier by Orion, shifting the balance of power with him now armed and Orion defenseless. Lu Chen leaped towards Orion, ready to end the confrontation. However, Orion activated a barrier that impressively blocked Lu Chen's attack. As Lu Chen retreated, he found the barrier solid, but suddenly Orion utilized his backup weapon, hurling it towards Lu Chen, resulting in a massive explosion where Lu Chen had stood. Orion received a notification stating that his armor had expired, leaving him vulnerable for 15 seconds with an 80% reduction in defense. Unperturbed, Orion believed he had disposed of Lu Chen, but to his shock, as the flames subsided, Lu Chen appeared unscathed. Orion was astonished that Lu Chen had withstood the dark fire thrust without injury. Lu Chen then slashed him, dealing 106 damage, causing Orion to inwardly curse his vulnerability. Lu Chen also noted that a single strike now dealt 106 damage, indicating Orion's defense had dropped after the barrier expired. Seizing the opportunity, Lu Chen swiftly beheaded Orion with a single powerful strike. He then informed Orion that if he ever wished to fight again, he would always find him. However, Orion abruptly logged out of the game, leaving Lu Chen shocked, interpreting it as Orion being intimidated. Meanwhile, back in the real world at Orion's home, he reviewed the battle against Lu Chen. Despite slowing down the recording to 0.5 speed, he couldn't discern what happened clearly. Determined, he resorted to watching it frame by frame, pausing and unpausing until he finally grasped the truth. Lu Chen had executed a subtle maneuver, dodging the attack and swiftly returning to his original position, creating the illusion of the spear passing through him. 
Overjoyed and determined not to let such expertise slip away, Orion, recognizing Lu Chen's skill on par with top experts like Candle Shadow Chaos and Fallen Dust, eagerly put back on his helmet, ready to log in again. Meanwhile, at the Life Graveyard, Orion arrived searching for Lu Chen. Seeing him nowhere, he wondered where he could be. Orion speculated if Lu Chen had logged off or gone to do tasks, but he concluded that it didn't matter as long as Lu Chen was in places like Cold Ice Ridge and Big Graveyard. He would definitely catch him. Meanwhile, Lu Chen sneezed and wondered if he had caught a cold or if someone was talking about him. As he sat atop the Greenbone Graveyard, he listened to the giants talking. One asked who exactly had ambushed them and complained about their rest day turning into overtime patrol. Another cursed because he had missed a chance to date the pink skeleton lady, and now it was gone. They started calling Lu Chen a coward and a villain who didn't show up when there were many of them. However, those words irritated Lu Chen, and he grew angry at being called a coward. He leaped down on them, surprising them, and with a clean vertical strike, he killed the giant and the bird simultaneously. Lu Chen then looked at them with a menacing expression as he asked how dare they insult him. He explained that the only reason he was hiding was to avoid angering the boss again, but they left him no choice now. The giants nearby acted swiftly, releasing their birds to call for backup before planning to attack Lu Chen simultaneously. The birds swiftly flew through the area, loudly revealing the intruder's location. As they surrounded him, one giant launched an attack, but Lu Chen effortlessly dodged it, prompting the others to join in, ready to kill him too. Suddenly, Lu Chen dodged another attack, leaving the giant shocked at his agility. He exclaimed that it was impossible for Lu Chen to evade so easily. Another giant reassured his ally not to panic, reminding him that Lu Chen was just one person and that their support was on its way. However, with a confident and somewhat menacing expression, Lu Chen remarked that it would be better if the backup arrived faster because, after all, killing them all would leave him bored while waiting. Meanwhile, the birds continued to chant Lu Chen's location, alerting the giants below that he was in the east. This skeleton giant wasn't just any ordinary one, he was the leader of the Green Bone Carbon Soldiers. He instructed his underlings to move swiftly and not let Lu Chen escape. Suddenly, he noticed something approaching, and then, slash, something hit him, dealing 378 damage. The leader was shocked, wondering what had happened to his neck. As he turned around to see his subordinates, he found them being slashed as well. He shouted, demanding the person to identify themselves. As Lu Chen stopped, the leader realized it was the skeleton who angered their boss. Lu Chen looked back and referred to the leader as a fish who slipped through his net. A system notification showed that he had collected 215 out of 200 green bone skeletons and 16 out of 20 ancient spore acid fingers. The boss then asked him how he got there because the last he checked, Lu Chen was at the east of the graveyard. Lu Chen answered that they were too slow so he had to come there himself. They then readied for a fight as Lu Chen leapt towards him with a slash and the giant slashed down at him as well. However, the boss was shocked as Lu Chen had actually killed him while also cutting his finger to complete his task of collecting 20 fingers. The system congratulated him on completing the quest and then told him to head to Cold Ice Ridge to exchange rewards. After that, he headed to Cold Ice Ridge, wondering what the reward for this Blackstone quest would be. Hopefully, a pair of arm guards, he wished. After exchanging quest rewards, he needed to find a place to repair the cracked weapon. Suddenly, he heard crying sounds, and upon closer inspection, he noticed a bunch of skeletons of his kind carrying a tomb. Lu Chen then inwardly reveals that a member of the patrol team has died, having also lost their head. This indicates a hidden mission, so he cannot let it slip by. He calls the captain, and immediately it notices him, grabbing his hand in excitement. Dear skeleton brother who brings gifts, long time no see, he greets him. He informs Lu Chen that something significant has happened to their patrol team. He angrily recounts how his brother Shaq, an outstanding scout, died in a surprise attack by an ironback bear on the icy path. Shaq's body was found but his head is missing. Determined to avenge his brother, Deke vows to eliminate the bear and retrieve Shaq's head. Lu Chen plays along, agreeing that the cursed Ironback Bear is happily living as part of Ice Ridge and vows to help. 
The leader tells Lu Chen that the future is in his hands and assigns him the task of retrieving the head. Lu Chen agrees and receives a mission notification, informing him that he has X hours to go to the icy path, kill the ironback bear, and bring back Shaq's head to Captain Fack. He will then receive a black jade, 20 reputation points, and 2,000 experience points. Since it's a time-sensitive mission, he decides to leave immediately, but first he needs to repair his gear to ensure success. Fack overhears him and informs him about a Death Forge workshop 500 meters east, suggesting he check it out. Lu Chen accepts and thanks him. A few moments later, he arrives at the workshop and notices the village chief chilling. Surprised, he asks when the chief started doing blacksmith work again, to which the chief responds that he has many skills. Man, I'm trying to be like bro, for real. The chief greeted Lu Chen with a casual, long time no see, before inquiring whether he wanted to enhance, reinforce, repair, or dismantle his equipment. Lu Chen opted to repair his gear. However, as he assessed the elderly-looking chief, he questioned the old man's ability in blacksmithing. The chief merely sighed, then shed his coat, revealing a powerful muscular physique. With a display of strength, he instructed Lu Chen to hand over the equipment, which he did. First, the iron was heated, followed by the refining process. Lu Chen was instructed to pay close attention as the chief skillfully hammered the blade. Impressed, Lu Chen remarked that the chief was cool. The final step was revealed with a mighty smash, resulting in a beautifully refined sword. Lu Chen was astounded by the transformation. The sword looked as good as new. When he inquired about the cost, the chief generously quoted just one silver coin. After payment, Lu Chen's new objective was to find the bear with 45 minutes remaining. Upon arriving at the icy path, he received a notification explaining its significance as a route from Ice Ridge to the Ice Citadel, a focal point of contention between light and dark factions. To the right lay a dense cedar forest, and to the left, a ghostly withered forest. Lu Chen recalled the bear should be in the dense cedar forest and began calling out, addressing it as, Little Bear! Suddenly he came face to face with the massive creature, realizing it was anything but small. Shocked by its size, he watched as it opened its eyes and rose, leaving him to wonder if it would attack. However, as Lu Chen approaches, the bear merely glances at him before settling back into slumber. This provokes Lu Chen, as it implies the bear doesn't see him as a threat. Determined to prove otherwise, Lu Chen leaps into the air, poised to strike. Suddenly the bear's eyes snap open again, catching Lu Chen mid-slash. Despite his effort, Lu Chen's attack only manages to deal 12 points of damage against the bear's tough hide. Shocked by the resilience of the bear's armor, Lu Chen realizes that his strikes are largely ineffective. In retaliation, the bear swipes at him, sending him hurtling through the air with a devastating blow that reduces his HP by 70 points. Gathering himself, Lu Chen curses his underestimation of the bear, acknowledging its defense to be as formidable as Orion's, complicating his predicament further. Now standing tall, the bear looms over Lu Chen as he beckons it forward. With a deafening roar, it charges toward him, intent on striking him down. However, Lu Chen taunts it, calling it foolish. He points out that while its armor may be formidable, other parts of its body may not be as well defended. Demonstrating this, he slashes at its exposed stomach, dealing a staggering 250 damage and causing the bear to collapse. As anticipated, the soft underbelly proves to be as vulnerable as tofu compared to the iron armor protecting its back. As the bear rises, its fury intensifies, its menacing presence undiminished. Lu Chen confidently declares that he has identified its weakness and vows to dispatch it swiftly. Suddenly, the unexpected occurs. The bear leaps into the air and shaped itself like a ball, leaving Lu Chen dumbfounded as he wonders how such a feat is even possible. For now, I've only been able to locate 20 chapters. However, if you guys know of a website with more chapters, please share it in the comments so I can continue adding more parts.